and my heart is heavy. My heart goes out to the family and the friends of the man who was killed last night on the streets of our city. I mourn with you. I'm going to support the police chief and the district attorney in apprehending and holding accountable those who are responsible for the homicide last night. I stand here with the police chief and the district attorney to again denounce the violence. The tragedy of last night cannot be repeated. All of us make, must take a stance against violence. And it doesn't matter who you are or what your politics are. We have to all stop the violence. For those of you saying on Twitter this morning that you plan to come to Portland to seek retribution, I'm calling on you to stay away. You, of course, have a constitutional right to be here, but we're asking you to stay away and work with us to help us de-escalate this situation. And Portlanders, I'm asking all of us to do our part too. One death is one death too many. Join me in denouncing all violence. Let's pull together in the name of peace and humanity. We don't always have to agree, but we've long done so without violence. That's part of what makes this nation strong. Let's end this long, hard summer and come together and work to support and lift each other, not tear each other apart. I'm going to continue to work with the community on the historic changes that we've already made and have committed to making as we reimagine what public safety and racial justice can look like in our community. And we'll continue to do that work in the weeks and the months ahead. There's so much work to do, and I'll be intentionally engaging the public as we proceed along these, the, proceed to uh, engage in that hard work together. Yesterday's events began with hundreds of cars filled with supporters of the president rallying in Clackamas County and then driving through downtown Portland. They were supported and energized by the president himself. President Trump, for four years, we've had to live with you and your racist attacks on black people. We learned early about your sexist attitudes towards women. We've had to endure clips of you mocking a disabled man. We've had to listen to your anti-democratic attacks on journalists. We've read your tweets slamming private citizens to the point of receiving death threats. And we've listened to your attacks on immigrants. We've listened to you label Mexicans rapists. We've heard you say that John McCain wasn't a hero because he was a prisoner of war. And now you're attacking Democratic mayors and the very institutions of democracy that have served this nation well since its founding. Do you seriously wonder, Mr. President, why this is the first time in decades that America has seen this level of violence? It's you who have created the hate and the division. It's you who have not found a way to say the names of black people killed by police officers, even as people in law enforcement have. And it's you who claimed that white supremacists are good people. Your campaign of fear is as anti-democratic as anything you've done to create hate and vitriol in our beautiful country. You've tried to divide us more than any other figure in modern history. And now you want me to stop the violence that you helped create. What America needs is for you to be stopped so that we can come back together as one America while recognizing that we must demand that all people, black, brown, white, every color from every political persuasion, pull together and hold all people accountable in stopping racism and violence, and we together are peaceful again under new leadership that reflects who we really are, we the people of this great nation. President Trump, you bring no peace. 
You bring no respect to our democracy. You, Mr. President, need to do your job as the leader of this nation. And I, Mr. President, will do my job as the mayor of this city. And we will both be held accountable, as we should. I'm also calling out every other elected official in Oregon to join me, not only in defeating racism, but also in helping me to stop the violence, as we are and will continue to be held accountable by all of our residents. Today, we need to decide who we are and where we want to go from here. Don't let this be the spark that sets off an acceleration of hostilities in our beautiful city. Those are not our values. What happened last night does not move us forward. It sets us back. I know the values of this community. I was born and raised here. I found my living here. I raised my family here. This is where I want to be, and I know the values of this community. We want to protest powerfully and peacefully. We believe that black lives matter, and we believe that it's the responsibility of our leaders to ensure that the systems that we have in place to protect and serve do so equitably. Let's engage with each other in thoughtful dialogue about reform and use the power of our shared values to move forward together. We must recommit our energy and our resources to advancing the work of reform and the transformation of our systems. We've seen the positive power of collective and focused and nonviolent action. We've seen the change. Our responsibility to each other is to keep moving forward. Portland is counting on its leaders, the city, the county, the state, our federal partners, to partner and use the collective power of our offices to create a better future for all of us. Thank you. Chuck LaBelle. Thank you, Tim. Last night, Portland witnessed another homicide, this time in downtown Portland. There are many who are sharing information on social media or jumping to conclusions that are not based in fact. A human being lost their life last night, and it's critical that everyone refrain from conjecture and allow us to gather the evidence and statements needed to hold the person who did this responsible for this heinous act. We ask that anyone with information or video or eyewitness accounts please come forward and share that information with our investigators so we can quickly resolve this case. Prior to the shooting, there was a political rally involving a vehicle caravan that traveled through Portland for several hours. There were some skirmishes between rally goers and counter demonstrators and police made several arrests. The caravan covered miles of area and officers responded to different locations as identified problems arose and provided a presence and even made arrests when warranted. The vehicle caravan had already cleared the area when the shooting occurred near Southwest 3rd and Alder. This is an active investigation and our detectives are gathering information to determine what happened and what led up to this death. In order to protect the integrity of this case, we cannot re uh, release any specific details at this time. Our Constitution permits freedom of speech and assembly, and individuals are free to disagree. But criminal activity, especially violence, is out of bounds. This event is already gaining extreme media attention, and I will once again point out this is not the only life lost to gun violence in Portland. On Thursday, a 16-year-old African-American teenager was gunned down in a city park. Three others were injured. Our investigators are still seeking information in that case as well. Some may not even be aware it happened as it hardly generated any headlines. We've witnessed an increase in more and more uncivilized activity in our city and in our nation. It's incumbent on all of us to do better. So lives, no more lives are lost. Portland desperately needs calm. We're living in an extremely divided era, 
And it's time for us to start focusing on what we have in common and not what divides us. Lives are at stake. And last, we'll bring up Multnomah County District Attorney Mike Schmidt, and we ask that you uh, hold the questions until after, and then when you do ask a question, let us know who you would like to question uh, to be directed to, and they will step to the microphone as necessary. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Wheeler and, and Chief Lavelle. Uh, as the mayor said, my heart is also heavy today. Anytime a human being loses their life, um, it's a huge tragedy and my condolences go out to the family. Martin Luther King said, we must learn to live together as brothers or perish together as fools. Those words are as true today as they were when Dr. King spoke them 56 years ago in St. Louis. I know today a lot of my neighbors in Multnomah County are fearful and they're hurting, and I understand that. We are stunned and saddened, angry and frustrated that this happened in our community. That the right or the duty to peacefully protest and speak out for an end to systemic racism that has plagued our country for generations could be undermined by this terrible act of violence. But my message today to my neighbors is we can never allow hatred or racism or division and violence to win. When we allow that, democracy loses. When we allow violence and division to triumph, hope dies. The violence that is occurring in our city needs to stop. Far too many people have been injured, and now somebody's died. Our community is being terrorized by people coming into Portland for the explicit purpose of committing violence, and that is not acceptable. We're seeing too much tragedy across our city. As Chief Lavelle said, on Thursday, a teenager died in a shooting in Northeast Portland. And a neighbor did what neighbors do. She tried to apply a tourniquet, but was unsuccessful. We have too much violence going on in our community. Hate, division, hopelessness, too many guns in the wrong hands is fueling this round of violence. And it will take all of us together to stop the bleeding in our community and in our country. My office is working closely with the police bureau and the mayor to investigate last night's shooting. As you have heard mentioned earlier in this press conference, we need cooperation of the public. It is vital that we find answers. I'm thankful for the officers and the detectives working with Chief Lavelle to investigate these crimes. The attorneys from my office that were out all night working with them to help us find answers and do and put together a proper investigation. I know and expect that the cases of violent acts will be investigated and then submitted to my office for review. We do not prosecute individuals based on ideologies or affiliations with political or non-political organizations. We will initiate a criminal case following a review of all of the evidence and whenever legally and ethically appropriate pursuant to state and constitutional law. We support freedom of speech. We support nonviolent protests. We support speaking out to improve our communities. We support standing up for each other. What we do not support is violence. We're in a pivotal time right now. We cannot afford to allow the calls for social justice to end to systemic racism to be overshadowed by the continued violence. We cannot allow this critical moment in our history to be hijacked. This is our community. We are strong. We reject violence when it occurs. My office is ready to hold offenders accountable. And together, in Dr. King's words, let's choose to live together as brothers and sisters and not perish together as fools. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay, we're going to now open up uh, the floor for questions. And again, identify which outlet you are with, uh, your name, and then your question and who it's directed at, or maybe in the other order, who it's directed at and then your question. And let's begin. Who's got a question? Hillary Ward from Oregonian. Okay. I'd like to hear from the mayor and the chief what kind of planning you had ahead of last night's demonstration since it seemed there was a high um, likelihood for person-on-person -person violence. Okay. Chief. Chief. 
So last night we had information that a, a vehicle caravan uh, was going to come up to Portland from Clackamas County. Um, early on we didn't have a good idea of the number and then once the uh, caravan started we had a sense of um, how many were in that caravan. Um, we tried to take precautionary measures during the route to keep them out of the downtown area. Um, the goal was to keep them on I-5, um, but later um, a group of those vehicles were able to come into the downtown core. We didn't have any specific information of a gathering where folks would be um, outside of vehicles. So most of our information previously surrounded the vehicle caravan that would be coming up from Clackamas. I, I don't have much to say beyond that, except that, of course, we were monitoring the situation on social media, and we chose not to publicize it. We didn't think that would help de-escalate the situation or any potential flashpoints. Good morning, VGW, uh, for the mayor. Mayor, what are you going to do going forward? I mean, um, this has been building for a long time. We have more than one flash now with kind of groups. What are you going to do to keep the same thing that happened last night from not escalating further? Thank you for the question. Yeah, so uh, obviously I've stood at this podium on a number of occasions, and I've expressed what my greatest fear would be. And I've said my greatest fear is somebody will die. And now somebody has. And we as a community are mourning, and I am, as the mayor, am accountable to the public and will continue to be accountable. So here's the specific steps that we're taking. Number one, I, along with my colleagues on the city council, committed to a number of fundamental reforms, having listened to and understood what nonviolent demonstrators were asking for in the city of Portland. I put forward a 19-point plan that was very specific in terms of actions that we could take, including reducing certain programs within the police bureau that were seen as biased by many people in the black community in particular. We made commitments to reinvest in the community to a significant degree. We made decisions to uh, engage the public more directly around oversight and accountability. And my colleagues and I referred a significant charter reform to the ballot, which will be on the November ballot when people have an opportunity to cast a vote. I encourage people to vote for that. We committed to working alongside our colleagues like um, uh, Lou Frederick, Senator Lou Frederick uh, and State Representative Janelle Bynum on fundamental reforms to criminal justice. And many of those reforms have now been passed in the legislative session. We've agreed to continue to work with others in the community, at the community level, to listen, to hear, to understand, and pass fundamental reforms. I'm now engaging with our uh, Citizen Review Commission, as well as the Portland Committee on Community-Engaged Policing, around reimagining what local policing can look like, what precinct policing can look like. And there are many other opportunities for us to work with the community directly. And as we proceed with this, I'm going to continue to ask the community to work with me. I'm going to continue to ask our colleagues at Multnomah County to work with me. I'm going to continue to ask the governor and our state legislature to work with me. And so there, this is a long road ahead of us, but we know that the dead end is violence. That is a dead end street. We don't want to be in that cul-de-sac. We need to focus our energy, focus our passion, focus our attention on the hard work of fundamental reform. And it starts with policing and criminal justice, but then we have a lot of work to do around education, around housing access, around health access, around shared economic prosperity opportunities. We have so much work yet to do, and I don't want the public to be sidetracked by engaging in violence. That is never the right answer. And so I'm asking the public to work with us, to continue to do the work that we've already engaged in around historic reforms, and let's work together moving forward. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, Josh Campesina. Hey, Josh. This morning, the president uh, had some very harsh words for you, obviously. He didn't condemn the violence, but he said that, in his words, it was unexpected 
because of the weeks of some violence we've seen in the city. What's your response to that? My, my response is, as the President of the United States and somebody who has been perpetrating divisive and hateful language for four years, for him to now stand here and say that it's unexpected and act as though he's shocked is appalling to me. We all saw this coming. And as I said, I've stood at this podium I don't know how many times and have said that we must denounce the violence, that we must work together, that we must accurately address what's going on around systematic injustices in our community here in Portland and hold ourselves accountable for what's happening here in Portland. But the president has a role to play in this as well in acknowledging and understanding those systematic injustices nationally. And the tweets that he has been putting out in the last 48 hours attacking Democratic mayors, attacking those who are trying to bring resolution to the violence in their local communities. He has an opportunity to uplift us and bring us together and help us move through this difficult situation in our nation's history. And instead, he chooses to play petty politics and divide us. That's my reaction. So I'm going to do the work that I need to do here in my local community with my local officials to take accountability for what's happening on our streets. And I'd appreciate that either the president support us or he stay the hell out of the way. What he appeared to be saying was that because of the violence, he's not surprised that there would be this other group coming in. What's your response to that? Well, of course he's not surprised. He, he encouraged them to come into our community. And previously, he has actually encouraged or at least tacitly approved of violence. And so uh, I'm, I'm not surprised in the slightest. I'm surprised if he would be surprised by this. Um, so yeah, th there's an olive branch opportunity here for all of us. We need to reset. The president needs to reset. I need to reset. This community needs to reset. And America needs to reset. And it's going to take his leadership in the White House. And it's going to take my leadership here in City Hall to get it done. And so I'm saying, let's end this summer. Let's end the violence. Let's commit to that. Is that something we can all agree on, that we are done with the violence? And now let's do the hard work of acknowledging, of hearing, and understanding the pain and the suffering and the fear and the anxiety that exists in this nation around the COVID crisis, which the president initially seemed to be ignoring or poo-pooing, and the economic crisis, which is now resulting, causing so many Americans economic stress and strain. And now the work that we have to do in our communities across this nation in the wake of the murder of George Floyd. I'm up to that challenge. And I hope the president is, too. And I'm ready to reach across any aisles I need to reach across, any political divides that I need to cross in order to bring us back together. Somebody's got to do it. I'm committed to it. I know my colleagues on the Portland City are co committed to it. I'd like to hear the President of the United States say he's all in. Let's bring this great nation back together. Uh, Alex, just for the um, we talk about community and talk about hearing locally. Um, a number of civil rights groups and progressive groups have called for your resignation this morning. What's your response to that? No. Mayor, I have a question. Yes. I heard you talk about accountability, police reform, things going on. You have a plan, though, for uh, keeping groups apart? I mean, we didn't see much of it yesterday in terms of keeping these folks apart. We certainly didn't see it last week. Is there any strategy going forward as this sort of escalates uh, that we can somehow keep folks apart, especially? We, we were very successful back on August 17th, you'll recall, a year ago, of keeping parties separated who had made it very clear on social media that they intended to get into it with each other. And what we did was we built a coalition, both of law enforcement, local, state, and federal law enforcement, to come together to keep the parties, the, the, those who, who might engage in violence, apart. But what we also had was the community unified. Several days prior, we had 120 different community organizations, organizations that don't always agree on the same, they don't all have the same politics, they don't all have the same representation, but we came together on that day and we said, we as a city do not stand for violence. We do not tolerate violence. And that's the kind of coalition that we're missing right now. We don't have elected officials on the same page. 
denouncing violence. We don't have community organizations coming together collectively in that kind of way with that kind of single-minded determination and focus to denounce violence and talk about the vision for the future. Uh, but specifically, operationally, I'll defer to the chief except to say that we are in conversations uh, with our Portland Police Bureau, our county sheriff's office, the governor and her team about the strategy going forward to do the best we can to, number one, create space for people to be able to demonstrate peacefully like those outside the room right now. And on the other hand, make it crystal clear, we do not tolerate violence. We do not tolerate uh, criminal destruction, and we will hold you accountable for those activities. Have you asked the governor for National Guard involvement? Uh, um, as you know, on, on two prior occasions, I have asked the governor for the National Guard. Uh, she declined in those two circumstances, but we are in communication now. Uh, it is my belief that between PPB, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office and the state police, we have been successfully throughout this in terms of uh, operations when we're combined and when we're collaborating. And I am told by our law enforcement professionals that that is sufficient, but I'll defer to the chief. Mayor Wilbur, you mentioned that you did. Did you want to say something on that? Uh, no, yeah, sorry. Mayor Wilbur, you mentioned that you feel that something like this could happen. Given that, how can the city take action over the weekend to prevent something like this? Well, I, I'm not sure how you specifically operationally can prevent this. I and mean, keep in mind, um, it's no secret to anybody that I personally am not a Trump supporter, that I will defend to the death the right of a Trump supporter to stand outside my apartment and nonviolently demonstrate in support of their candidate. That's core to American democracy, is that right to demonstrate freely without the fear of retribution. So when people say they want to come into the city in a caravan supporting their presidential candidate, we cannot tell them no. They have constitutional rights to be here, rights which I embrace and support. The violence, however, is the problem. And so what I'm asking people right now, knowing what happened last night, is if you're thinking you're going to come back into our city from somewhere else to seek retribution, I'm telling you to stay away. Work with us. Help us de-escalate this situation. One death is too many. We don't want other people to die. So that's what I'm asking people from outside to do. What I'm asking all of us as Portlanders to do is do our part too. Let's not take the bait. Let's not engage. And if you see people doing things that look violent or destructive, say something. Do something. Don't just um, be passive. Because ultimately, when we see examples of violence, that undermines our democracy. We're, this democracy is dependent upon us having differences of opinion and being able to vet differences of opinion and being able to have uncomfortable conversations without resorting to violence. So I've asked the president to do his part. I will do my part, too. We both have an important role to play. We will both be held accountable. Hi, Bridget. Uh, why do we not see we had a, a strong presence uh, yesterday. Um, most of this activity was vehicle borne, um, covering several miles on the highways. So we did have officers and vehicles. We had our traffic division. We had folks stationed at different areas. But it's very difficult when you have small groups of people spread throughout the city, too, who sometimes um, engage in violence acts with each other. I mean, we only have limited resources, so we can't be everywhere at the same time. Um, the prior Saturday, we had, I think, about 30 officers working. So, I mean, our resources were strained. We had a, an event the night before uh, that required our crowd control resources. We had to staff for an event Saturday night, uh, later that night, and also still answer calls for service. So we were only able to bring together um, that limited amount of resources for the Saturday afternoon uh, portion. And it's just not always operationally feasible to insert that small number of officers in between two crowds who are hostile towards one another and engaged. It's just um, not necessarily operationally safe all the time to get in the middle of that. In which case? Uh, no, not at this time. Chief, could you say how many officers you had on last night? 30 last weekend? 
Um, I don't know the exact number. I'd have to go back and, and check, but we can get that to you. Sure. To my knowledge, we uh, had spoken to folks to try to get a sense of what the route would be and encourage the route to not be through the downtown core. Did you have a commitment that that would be safe? I don't know if we had a commitment, but I know we had conversations around it. Can you spoke about officers stopping cars when there's a need for life safety? Um, last night we saw numerous videos at least of uh, vehicles running, driving towards crowds of people, um, and officers were there as well. Um, why were those factors not used yesterday? Would it depend on the circumstance? I think vehicles and uh, protesters on foot are just a bad mix in general. And I think uh, given the opportunity, if we feel a vehicle poses some sort of threat to either officers or community members, uh, disabling it by disabling the tires is an option. Uh, that's not always feasible, though, depending on where officers are positioned, where the vehicle's positioned, and things of that nature. Is there what is the plan for tonight? I mean, this has potentially be very violent if there are new people coming to seek retribution. So walk us through what the plan is. I haven't talked to my uh, incident command folks yet. I know we're reaching out to partners to try to uh, resource properly for tonight. Uh, and I'm not sure what we have in the way of intelligence, but it's very possible that what happened last night could play a factor in what happens tonight. So we want to make sure we've reached out to everyone we can to get the proper resources in place. Hey, Chief. Danny Haynes from the Portland Tribune. In 2018 and 19, we had protests that were right versus left and brawls in the park. In 2020, we've had the Black Lives Matter and the systemic racism violence. Was last night one of, of those or, and not the other, or has the Venn diagram gotten such that they're blurred? Was that a brawl in the park like we saw in 2019? Was that a Black Lives Matter? Have you, have you been able to isolate what happened last night as far as the nature of it? I don't think I'd be able to classify kind of the nature of that particular interaction. Um, to me, it could have just been a, a skirmish between two small groups or a problem that, that erupted between individuals. So it's hard for me to classify it as more of a Black Lives Matter thing or like a, you know, kind of political ideology case. But I think as we get further into the investigation, we might learn more. Chief, um, did some of the folks in the caravan uh, were, you know, had paintball guns, uh, bear spray. Uh, they people, protesters were in the crosswalks and cars were driving through and almost running over them. Um, are you going to be seeking any, build any cases up of those um, you know, against those um, Potentially. It would depend what information comes uh, comes forward for us. We were able to make, I think, uh, about 10 arrests on individual uh, skirmishes or things that happened that we could identify and take action on. But, I mean, with, with a caravan that big covering that much area, um, we use our resources to really keep people safe. Um, but if we do get information that leads to a prosecutable case, we'll follow up on that. Chief, you mentioned concerns about misinformation. You know, I don't, I don't have any specific information on the victim that I can release at this time, but I do know as, as these kind of transpire, social media uh, becomes very rampant with information, um, which isn't always uh, factual. So I just want to make people mindful, you know, be careful what you, what you believe on social media. We're investigating. We'll be releasing information um, at different steps of the process, and we'll, uh, we'll keep you guys posted then. You know, shooting was politically motivated. I do not know that, no. Chief Mike, New York Times, you're saying, or we've seen basically here, here's gunshots fired from both sides, if you want to call it two sides here, in the last few weeks. If you're saying it's operationally not feasible to keep those two sides apart, what's going to stop this from escalating to an open firefight in the streets? You know, I hope it doesn't come to that. We are, you know, we have a, a finite resource of officers, and we have these activities taking place all throughout the city. The downtown core, our police precincts, our union offices, and several, you know, random places. So we can't be everywhere at once. Um, the issue with firearms is very troubling to us, but people do have a constitutional right to carry firearms legally. So it's hard to prevent. I mean, some of the instances that take place, you're talking split second, a couple seconds. So a lot of times we are not right there to see things happen. 
I think the best we can do is message to people that we want a safe city. We ask them not to come downtown or to these other places with firearms, not engage in violent acts of crime. And I think, you know, where we can, we have our resources stationed and we take action when we can. We've made several hundred arrests throughout these protests. So um, we've been out there 90 plus nights straight doing our you know, our best to keep the city safe and to keep these interactions from happening. But um, it, it's hard to be in absolutes and say, you know, we can be here and prevent these skirmishes. Are you close to needing the National Guard? You know, I think we need additional resources. I think um, Oregon State Police have been a great partner for us. Multnomah County has been a great partner for us. As we see these things develop, it may get to that point. but. Um, I think right now it's really kind of determining what, what we have available as far as resources and what we're facing as far as uh, violent crowd activity. What would be the reason not to call an actual, like what's the hesitancy there, you know? Um, I mean, I don't have a hesitancy one way or the other. I think if it comes to the point where we look at our resources and we look at the problem facing us and that seems like the best option to assist, then that's, that's what will need to happen. Um, I'm not sure, honestly. I probably will know more after I talk to my incident management team folks. But, um, you know, we had a curfew early on in this, and it wasn't very uh, successful. We still had very large crowds at that time. But um, I would say it's not something that's totally off the table, but it's not something I don't think we're looking at at this moment. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry. Uh, last night, there was lots of pockets of violence. Some of the reports were from the from, you know, balls, mace, pistols, and that um, We didn't see the police officers for, you know, in most of these. Uh, and so I'm asking, were you trying to insert yourself and separate the group? Or were you saying, because you don't have an officer, you're going to stay away and, and just let this play out? No, we had our, our resources focus on the vehicular part of the you know, of the event yesterday. Um, there were some skirmishes that took place on the street, to my understanding. But, um, you know, when we have those resources, and even the, um, the homicide last night, we had resources nearby. They just weren't right there when it happened. I mean, when I'm thinking of like police officers, you know, visible, um, there was no police officers visible this fight could go on for a while. Are you thinking about adding just uh, playing, like police officers on the corners and stuff just to have a presence? Um, you know, that's possible, but I think for us, it's like, what, where can we deploy officers where they're safe? It doesn't, um, it doesn't help to have one officer in a place where they're kind of in the middle of something and can't respond and don't have cover to keep themselves safe. So I think it's really um, a resource issue in that how do we operationalize um, the most effective groups of officers in places, but we, don't, we never know where these are going to take place. We have an idea of where this caravan of vehicles is going, so we focus there. Um, throughout the downtown core, there's a lot of street corners, parking structures, things of that nature where these things can happen, and it's hard to have officers at all of these at all times. That's, that's a fantastic question, and I appreciate you asking. The question is, how do I create the same coalition I created last August when some of the members of the coalition are, in fact, calling for my resignation? And the answer is because it's not all about me. It's about the community. It's about who we are. It's about who we want to be. And it's about taking a stand against violence. And even last year, a number of those coalition groups spoke out against me at the press conference which I had organized. And I was okay with it because it's okay to have differences of opinion when it comes to politics. But what isn't okay and where we should have no difference of opinion is when it comes to violence. We should all stand together and it doesn't matter what our political affiliations are, whether we like each other, we should stand together because we denounce violence. And we know that it's not the right way to solve our political differences. And so I will continue to reach out to whoever 
will work with me to denounce violence and bring this to a peaceful conclusion. I will reach out to whoever wants to work with me and my colleagues uh, as we move forward on reimagining what policing can be so that it's equitable for everybody. And uh, for those who don't want to work with me, maybe they'd work with one of my colleagues, or whether maybe they'd work with Mike, or maybe they'd work with, with the chief. Um, this, this is an all-hands-on-deck call. And so uh, in the days ahead, uh, that's what we're doing. In fact, this morning I spoke to a number of leaders in the black community and talked about the importance of not only their engagement, but the importance of their leadership as we move forward, because ultimately the community will listen to them, I believe, at a time when uh, we're having this national reckoning around racial justice and equity and police reform. Uh, and so we'll continue to work to build the coalitions that we can to stand in opposition to the violence. Could, 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 Trump is watching this right now because he's just on his favorite medium is talking about you. And he says, he has a number of negative things to say about you, but he says that Wheeler would like to blame me and the federal government for going in, but he hasn't seen anything yet. Do you think that as a threat to send in more federal forces, or do you think that just continues this, this ongoing fight? It's classic Trump. Uh, Mr. President, how can you think that a comment like that, if you're watching this, is in any way helpful? Uh, it's an aggressive stance. It is not collaborative. Uh, I certainly reached out, I believe, in a collaborative manner by saying earlier uh, that you need to do your part and I need to do my part and then we both need to be held accountable. And I think it would be helpful uh, not for me to tell you how to do your job uh, because, frankly, I don't appreciate it when you tell me how to do mine. But this would be a really good time for all of us to stand together, to lock arms, to denounce the violence, to make a commitment to the kind of changes and reforms that the people in this country are demanding. And let's work together. Wouldn't that be a message? Donald Trump and Ted Wheeler working together to help move this country forward. Why don't we try that for a change? No, I've never met the president. Mayor, if I could follow up on something. Uh, Joanne Hardis, who's coming up with a plan to transition yourself as police commissioner, what do you think about that? Uh, she and I have had many conversations about bureaus. She knows that we will be making a bureau shift in the near term as uh, Commissioner-elect Ryan joins us. Uh, in just about a week and a half, and I haven't had, had a number of conversations with Dan. Uh, I have no plans to transfer the police bureau at this point. When we know what the constitution of the council is in January, everything's on the table. You know, you mentioned this idea of responsibility, you know, when the buck stops with you. Do you think you're taking enough responsibility for the violence we've seen in these protests in Portland? I ask myself that question every day. Uh, I, I go to bed with that question foremost in my mind. And when I wake up in the morning, that's the first question I ask myself. Am I doing everything that I possibly can to end the violence in this community? Am I doing everything I possibly can to hear and understand different perspectives about what people want our community to be and how they want to envision it going forward? Am I doing everything that I can to meaningfully engage the community as we go through this time of crisis together? Make no mistake about it, this is a very challenging time for everyone. There's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of fear, there's, uh, you know, this, is a, this is a time when this generation is being called to rise up. And um, I, you know, I ask myself, what more do I need to do at each and every moment? And sometimes, honestly, I have found myself coming up short. And when I come up short, I acknowledge it, I admit it, and then I move on. I fix what needs to be fixed, and I work with whoever I need to work with to make things right. And that's the path that we're on. Mayor really, I'm Yes, sir. Um, so there was just sort of this palpable sense of, you know, something might go wrong yesterday. And I think it's a fairly predictable outcome when you have two sort of dynamically opposed groups meeting in the South. Would you say the city did everything in its power to avoid this outcome? It's hard for me to stand here today with a human being dead and say we did everything we possibly could, either myself individually as the mayor of this city or people in the community at large. Uh, it's hard for me to sit here and make that proclamation over somebody who has lost their lives. And I think about that family and what they're going through today. 
Um, so I, I can't make that statement today, and I think it would be preposterous for me to do so. But I'm certainly being introspective. I'm working with my team and others, and we're talking about how do we make sure that that is the only time somebody dies on the streets of our city that way. It was one too many. Thank you.